Every now and then, people become viral sensations on the internet, and this was the case for David and Peter. You probably know them as the Barbarian Brothers, and they were inescapable in the late 80s and early 90s for their bodybuilding physiques. However, just as quickly as they rose to fame, their story took a dark and tragic turn. From a career that was nothing to write home about to an unexplainable death, this is the full and sad story of the Barbarian Brothers. The Early Years of the Barbarian Brothers David and Peter Paul, famously known as the Barbarian Brothers, were born on March 8, 1957, in Hartford, Connecticut, to William and Dorothy Paul. From a young age, the twins exhibited a unique bond and an extraordinary eagerness for life that would later become their trademark. Growing up in a modest household as part of a large family, the Paul twins faced a childhood rooted in simplicity, discipline, and hard work. Their father, William, a former college track star, was instrumental in shaping their early lives. While their older siblings grew up quietly, David and Peter were often in the spotlight, frequently getting into trouble due to their high energy and bold personalities. David, in particular, faced challenges in school, often being teased for being stupid. It wasn't until later that both twins were diagnosed with severe dyslexia, a discovery that explained some of their academic struggles and tendency to act out. Despite these difficulties, the Paul twins began to carve out a unique identity for themselves. Encouraged by their father's background as a fitness enthusiast and amateur bodybuilder, they were introduced to weightlifting at a young age. This exposure to fitness not only helped them build their physiques, but also instilled in them a deep passion for bodybuilding, one that would ultimately define their lives. By the time they were 15, David was already bench pressing an impressive 300 pounds, showcasing the raw strength and determination that would become synonymous with the Barbarian Brothers. Their school years were full of both struggles and triumphs. Although both David and Peter faced challenges due to their dyslexia, they excelled in physical activities. David, who was always slightly taller than Peter, stood out in football, while both twins made the all New England wrestling team. Their physical skills set them apart from their peers, and they began to be recognized not just for their strength, but also for their unbreakable bond and teamwork. They were fiercely competitive, but always supportive of each other, a dynamic that defined their relationship both on and off the field. Their passion for fitness grew stronger during their teenage years, and soon bodybuilding became the central focus of their lives. While they participated in local sports events, their true love was pumping iron. The twins were known to spend countless hours at the gym, driven by a desire to push their physical limits and sculpt their bodies. Peter recalled, holidays like Christmas, we didn't go home, we just worked out. New Year's Eve, all we did was squat. On Saturday, people would come to our apartment and we'd do neck exercises at 12 o'clock at night. This level of dedication was extraordinary and it set them apart from their peers who might have pursued more conventional teenage pastimes. Following high school, the Paul twins bounced in and out of various colleges, never quite settling into the academic environment due to their dyslexia and restless spirits. Instead, they decided to fully immerse themselves in their passion for bodybuilding. In 1977, they took a bold step and opened their own gym, P&D's House of Iron, in Narragansett, Rhode Island. Their gym quickly became known for its no-nonsense, hardcore training environment. David once humorously noted, the mirrors all came from the men's room at the University of Rhode Island. The gym also attracted attention from local law enforcement due to numerous traffic violations, adding to their growing legend. The twins, though not identical, were often difficult to tell apart, especially as they developed similar bodybuilder physiques. Their dedication to fitness and unique personalities caught the eye of Pete Grimkowski, a professional bodybuilder and one of the new owners of the famous Gold's Gym in Venice, California. After meeting the twins at a bodybuilding contest in New York in May 1979, Grimkowski encouraged them to move to Los Angeles. 
Inspired by the success of bodybuilding icons like Arnold Schwarzenegger and television stars like Lou Ferrigno, the Paul twins saw California as a land of opportunity. They decided to take the plunge and drive out to the West Coast, determined to make a name for themselves. Upon arriving in California, the twins made a memorable entrance. As Peter Paul recalled, we pulled up together on a motorcycle the first day and people stared at us as if we were Martians. You know, we had the jeans, the boots, the flannel shirts, the headbands. We walked in, went to the bench press and started warming up. We got up to our work sets with 500 pounds, which we could both do for a lot of sets and reps. That was a normal weight for us, nothing special, but the members of Golds were freaking out. It wasn't long before their reputation as two incredibly strong and charismatic bodybuilders spread throughout the gym and beyond. Their early days in Southern California were filled with intense training, hard work, and a bit of chaos. They continued to live by their own rules, often training when everyone else was out celebrating or resting. Their work ethic, coupled with their impressive physiques, quickly set them apart in the highly competitive bodybuilding scene of Venice Beach. The twins were not just muscle-bound athletes. They had a flair for the dramatic and a sense of humor that endeared them to fans and fellow bodybuilders alike. This combination of strength, charisma, and an unorthodox approach to life made them stand out. Back in their home state of Connecticut, their family had always valued resilience and perseverance, attributes that the twins embodied fully. Growing up, they were instilled with a strong work ethic, often taking on odd jobs like delivering newspapers or working at local stores to help support their family. These early experiences of balancing work, school, and their rigorous fitness routines taught them responsibility and time management. While their early years were not without hardship, they were shaped by a strong sense of determination and an unyielding desire to succeed. By the time they reached adulthood, David and Peter Paul had a clear vision for their future. With their unwavering support for each other and a shared dream of making it big in the world of bodybuilding and entertainment, the twins were ready to take on new challenges. Their journey from a modest household in Hartford, Connecticut to the bustling fitness scene of Southern California is a testament to their grit, determination, and relentless pursuit of their passions the Barbarian Brothers would soon become a household name, not just for their unparalleled strength, but for their dynamic presence in both the fitness world and the entertainment industry. Their story is one of perseverance, brotherhood, and the undying spirit to stand out and succeed against the odds. The Rise of the Barbarians, Breaking into the Mainstream when David and Peter Paul came to California, they brought with them a rough and no-nonsense style that was strikingly different from the bodybuilding culture at Gold's Gym in Venice, the epicenter of the bodybuilding world. The twins had honed their craft in their dimly lit, damp gym back east, where they trained hard throughout long, cold winters with minimal heat. This environment shaped their unique approach to fitness and fashion. Flannel shirts, jeans, and headgear like hats or bandanas were their uniforms even in the blazing summer heat of California. This distinctive attire and rugged demeanor quickly set them apart from the regulars at Gold's, who favored minimal clothing to show off their chiseled bodies. Tank tops, t-shirts, and shorts were the norm even in the cooler months. The Barbarian Brothers, always heavily clothed, became known as the Lumberjacks among the bodybuilding elite. With their bulging muscles hidden beneath layers of flannel, the only visible parts of their bodies were their thick, muscular necks, which they trained intensively, measuring a whopping 20.5 inches. However, it wasn't just their unique style that caught the eye of fellow bodybuilders and onlookers. It was their remarkable strength. The Paul brothers quickly gained a reputation for their almost superhuman power. They could reverse bench press 500 pounds with ease, perform behind-the-neck presses with 365 pounds, and swing the heaviest dumbbells in the gym for cheat curls. At their peak, Peter stood at six feet tall, weighing 235 pounds, while David, slightly taller at six, won, 
weighed in at 245 pounds. David once remarked, We weren't the world's strongest men, but we were the world's strongest bodybuilders, and many who witnessed their feats of strength would agree. Their incredible power, combined with their unique style and charisma, made them a formidable presence in the gym, quickly establishing them as forces to be reckoned with in the bodybuilding world. By the early 1980s, the Paul twins had earned a new moniker, the Barbarians or the Barbarian Brothers. This nickname was partly inspired by the cultural zeitgeist of the time, fueled by the rising popularity of Arnold Schwarzenegger's Conan the Barbarian. Their wild, untamed look and larger-than-life personalities made them perfect for the spotlight. And soon, the media couldn't get enough of them. The twins' rugged charisma and rebellious aura captivated the press, and they quickly became a favorite feature in well-known fitness publications such as Muscle & Fitness, Muscle Mag International, and Powerlifting USA. The Barbarian Brothers' rise to fame was cemented when they graced the cover of the January 1982 issue of Muscle & Fitness, catapulting them into the limelight of the bodybuilding scene. Their appeal wasn't just limited to fitness circles. They began to cross over into mainstream media, appearing in the Los Angeles Times and guest starring on both local and national television talk shows. Their unfiltered and audacious personalities made them standout guests, often sharing outrageous stories and experiences that left audiences both shocked and entertained. In the summer of 1982, their fame soared when they were featured in an extensive eight-page article in Sports Illustrated titled, Honing the Barbarians. At that time, Sports Illustrated was at the peak of its popularity, boasting a circulation of three million, which significantly boosted the Barbarian Brothers' visibility and fame. The twins' penchant for telling tall tales and outrageous anecdotes only added to their mystique. Their public persona was larger than life, and they seemed to have an endless supply of wild stories. While it was often difficult to discern fact from fiction in their narratives, the line between reality and myth only enhanced their image as true barbarians. Barbaric Antics – The Outrageous Lifestyle of the Barbarian Brothers True to their name, the Barbarian Brothers became infamous not only for their strength, but also for their audacious antics, both in and out of the gym. They cultivated an image of rebellion and excess that bordered on the absurd, contributing to their growing legend. According to their tales, their diet was as extreme as their workouts. They claimed to consume an extraordinary 36 eggs each day and 7,000 calories, much of which came from junk food like ice cream, cookies, Doritos, and Captain Crunch cereal. Despite their high-calorie, unorthodox diet, they maintained a body fat percentage of just 6%, or so they claimed. Their behavior was as wild as their diets. They famously accumulated $6,000 in unpaid parking tickets, rationalizing their actions with the explanation that rules didn't apply to barbarians. They even recounted pouring chocolate milk on a man in a Ferrari simply because, as David put it, we always did the things people were afraid to do, but we did them. One story that stood out was their habit of vomiting after their massive egg breakfasts off the balcony of their Venice, California apartment to the horror of pedestrians below. These outrageous stories became a part of their mythos, further blurring the line between reality and their created legend. As David humorously stated, a barbarian wouldn't lie, would he? Print the legend. While their wild stories might have been embellished, there was no disputing the incredible feats of strength that the Barbarian Brothers performed, which were well documented through eyewitness accounts, photographs, and even video footage. Their intense training sessions and impressive strength were not just rumors, they were real. The brothers were frequently hired for paid exhibitions where they would perform their remarkable lifts without their usual equipment, often to the amazement of the crowd. One such exhibition took place at Disneyland in 1982, where the twins put on a memorable display of raw power. David, the stronger of the two, showcased his strength by bench pressing 500 pounds with a reverse grip, a move that requires immense power and control. 
Not to be outdone, Peter followed up with four reps of behind-the-neck presses using 315 pounds, a move that is rarely attempted due to the sheer difficulty and risk involved. David then took on seated shoulder presses with 150-pound dumbbells, while Peter used the same massive weights for a few reps of alternating cheat curls. These incredible demonstrations of power solidified their reputation as two of the strongest and most entertaining figures in bodybuilding. As their fame grew, the Barbarian brothers began to expand beyond bodybuilding and into popular culture, leveraging their unique image and strong presence. They began to attract attention from Hollywood, which was always on the lookout for larger-than-life personalities to cast in films and television shows. Their distinctive look, charismatic personalities, and unapologetic attitudes made them natural fits for the screen. Throughout the early to mid-1980s, the Paul brothers landed roles in several films that capitalized on their rugged, barbaric personas. They starred in the movie DC Cab, 1983, alongside Mr. T, where they played bodyguard roles that mirrored their off-screen personas, tough, muscular, and slightly outrageous. They also appeared in the film The Barbarians, 1987, a sword and sorcery adventure that further cemented their place as pop culture figures in the 1980s. This film capitalized on their established brand, showing them as larger-than-life heroes who were both strong and humorous. Their success in entertainment did not mean they abandoned bodybuilding. Instead, they combined both worlds, building a unique brand that was part fitness, part Hollywood. They continued to perform at bodybuilding events, often drawing large crowds who came to see their strength demonstrations and to hear their outrageous stories firsthand. The Barbarian Brothers' rise to fame was fueled not just by their strength or their wild stories, but by their rebellious nature and refusal to conform to the norms of the bodybuilding or entertainment industries. They were never just another pair of bodybuilders. They were performers, characters, and anti-heroes in a world that often took itself too seriously. Their refusal to play by the rules, whether it was in the gym, on the streets of Venice, or on film sets, made them relatable to a generation that valued individuality and rebellion. Their antics and stories, whether entirely true or not, tapped into a spirit of freedom and nonconformity that resonated with many fans. They were rough around the edges, but always authentic to themselves. In a world of polished fitness gurus and Hollywood stars, the Barbarian Brothers stood out as a breath of fresh air, embodying both strength and a sense of humor. While their success in both bodybuilding and Hollywood was impressive, what truly set them apart was their ability to blend the two worlds into a seamless brand that was both entertaining and inspiring. The Barbarian Brothers, with their unapologetic style and incredible strength, remain unforgettable icons in the history of bodybuilding and popular culture. David and Peter Paul, better known as the Barbarian Brothers, frequently touted themselves as the world's strongest bodybuilders. However, unlike many of their contemporaries in the bodybuilding world, the Paul twins never entered official powerlifting or bodybuilding competitions. In interviews from that time, the brothers often claimed they were waiting to achieve perfection before stepping onto a competitive stage, suggesting they were almost there. Yet, those who followed their careers noted that their leg development lagged behind their impressive upper body strength, something they cleverly concealed in their gym workouts but couldn't hide in their 1987 film, The Barbarians. There's a well-known image from that film of one of the twins squatting 495 pounds in jeans, a lift that, while notable, seemed modest compared to their powerful bench presses and shoulder lifts. This gap in their competitive resume fueled speculation and mystique about what they could have achieved in professional bodybuilding if they had chosen to compete. Some argued that their decision to remain out of the competitive spotlight only added to their legend. Others speculated they were wise to avoid competitions where they might not have fared as well as expected. 
By staying away from the bodybuilding stage, the Paul brothers effectively printed the legend of their unparalleled strength and persona without having to back it up against other top athletes. Ironically, despite having the massive physiques, charismatic costumes, and a marketable tag team name, the Barbarian Brothers, David and Peter never ventured into the realm of professional wrestling. This decision is puzzling given their backgrounds as amateur wrestlers, which would have made them natural candidates for the wrestling ring. The mid-1980s saw a massive boom in professional wrestling with the rise of the World Wrestling Federation WWF. But by then, the Paul twins were already carving out a niche in Hollywood. They may have just missed the timing to capitalize on that wrestling explosion. Instead, they focused on building their acting careers, taking on small roles in Hollywood films and TV shows. They first appeared in DC Cab, 1983, a comedy that starred Mr. T and a host of other colorful characters. They followed this up with a bit part in The Flamingo Kid, 1984, and then a memorable guest appearance on the hit TV show, Knight Rider, in 1986. The twins brought their larger-than-life personas to the screen, but these roles were mostly minor and did not offer much opportunity to showcase their unique brand. The Barbarian Brothers. Go to Italy, a taste of stardom. The Paul twins' Hollywood journey took an interesting turn when they were cast in The Barbarians, 1987, a sword and sorcery film shot in Italy that attempted to ride on the waves of the Conan the Barbarian success. Described as a low-budget Conan knockoff, the film was an ambitious endeavor that saw David and Peter step into leading roles for the first time. The twins arrived in Italy a month before filming began to train rigorously in swordplay and horseback riding to ensure they looked authentic on screen. As David recalled, we got there a month early to train in swordplay and to ride horses so we would look good. Thank God we did a lot of swordplay. We had these helmets on. You couldn't see out of those things. It had to be like a dance or it wouldn't have worked. Despite the challenging conditions, he fondly remembered the experience. It was a blast. Riding the horses, Italy is amazing. The food, the culture, the people. What a beautiful country. That was by far the most fun movie we made. Despite their hard work and enthusiasm, the Barbarians did not fare well critically or commercially. The film's campy tone, combined with its low-budget production values, led to it being dismissed as another forgettable B-movie. David later lamented, I don't know what happened, but something happened to our careers after that movie. There were a lot of articles in magazines and newspapers all over the world saying my brother and I were going to take over. We were funny and we were different. I can't say for sure, but something happened after that movie. We only did B-movies. Although the film had the look and feel of a higher budget production, it failed to elevate their status in Hollywood beyond the realm of B-grade cinema. Around the time of The Barbarians, or possibly after, the Paul twins underwent a physical transformation off-screen as well. They reportedly had plastic surgery to enhance their appearances, with procedures to strengthen their jawlines and narrow their noses. This shift in their look was complemented by their decision to start wearing distinctive barbarian wigs, both in their movies and during public appearances. This theatrical choice added another layer to their brand, reinforcing their barbaric image both on and off the screen. A cult following from the VHS era. Following the Barbarians, the Paul twins continued their acting careers with a string of straight-to-video comedies that further cemented their status as cult figures rather than mainstream stars. They headlined films like Think Big, 1990, a comedy in which they played truck-driving twins, Double Trouble, 1992, where they portrayed a pair of mismatched twins caught up in a crime caper, and Twin Sitters, 1994, a light-hearted family film that saw them as babysitters for a pair of troublesome kids. These movies, while not critical darlings, developed a certain nostalgic charm for some viewers, particularly those who grew up during the VHS. 
boom of the 1980s and early 1990s. Despite being low-budget productions, these films had a certain so-bad-they're-good quality, featuring over-the-top action sequences, cheesy one-liners, and the undeniable charisma of the Paul brothers. For some members of Generation Y, these films were a staple of their childhoods, making the Barbarian brothers almost like the cool, rough-around-the-edges babysitters they never had. Despite their undeniable charisma, unique image, and impressive physical strength, the Barbarian Brothers never quite broke into the Hollywood mainstream in the way that many expected them to. Their films, although remembered fondly by some, never reached beyond the B-movie status, and their careers seemed to stall after the Barbarians. For David and Peter Paul, their journey through the industry was marked by a mix of near breakthroughs and missed opportunities. They remained beloved by a niche audience, celebrated more for their offbeat personalities and their unapologetically unique style rather than for any single cinematic achievement. Their decision to sidestep both the competitive bodybuilding and professional wrestling circuits may have kept them from reaching the heights of some of their contemporaries in those fields. However, it also allowed them to carve out a distinctive niche as one-of-a-kind entertainers who left a lasting impression on the cultural landscape of the 1980s and 1990s. The Barbarian Brothers, in many ways, remain icons of an era, a reminder of a time when bold personalities, wild stories, and larger-than-life characters could still find their place, even if it was just on the shelves of the local video store. The Barbarian Brothers, David and Peter Paul, had their sights set on revitalizing their careers with a potential role in Natural Born Killers, 1994, a controversial film directed by Oliver Stone. They were cast in a peculiar, nearly three-minute scene opposite Robert Downey Jr., which could have given them a new level of visibility. However, their hopes were dashed when the scene was ultimately cut from the film's final version. This missed opportunity was a significant blow to the twins who were struggling to find their footing in Hollywood by then. It seemed like the window for major acting roles was closing and the Barbarian Brothers began to pivot their focus away from mainstream entertainment. Never once to shy away from trying something new, the Barbarian Brothers decided to venture into the music industry, experimenting with a rap career in the early 1990s. They sought to infuse their bold, rebellious style into music, but the venture never quite took off. A notable example was their song, What You Looking At, featured in the film Twin Sitters, 1994. While the track gained a bit of popularity among their niche fan base, it never achieved mainstream success. Despite their attempts, the music industry proved to be an even tougher arena than bodybuilding or acting, and the Barbarian Brothers' rap career fizzled out as quickly as it began. After stepping away from his film career, David Paul found a new passion that allowed him to express his creativity in a different way, photography. He became a talented photographer, known for capturing stunning and artistic shots of bodybuilding legends such as Flex Wheeler, Jay Cutler, and Lee Priest. His work stood out for its unique style, blending the raw power of bodybuilding with an artistic, almost ethereal aesthetic. David's photographs became highly regarded within the bodybuilding community, showcasing the athletes in a new light that focused on both their physical prowess and their artistry. David later returned to his roots on the East Coast, moving back to Rhode Island. There, he settled in a two-story barn built around 1820, which he had converted into a breathtaking home. It was always my dream to live in a barn and create this ancient-looking place with a clean, modern feel, David shared in a 2019 interview. He embraced a rustic, vintage aesthetic, not only in his photography, but also in his work as a designer and furniture maker. My specialty is making things look old, he explained. David's life took on a quieter, more contemplative tone, far removed from the hustle of Hollywood. 
His love for his surroundings was complemented by the companionship of his Great Dane, who was often by his side. Tragically, David Paul passed away in his sleep on March 6, 2020, just two days shy of his 63rd birthday. His death was a sudden and unexpected loss to those who knew him and the bodybuilding and artistic communities he had impacted. He is survived by his son, Wyatt, who carries on his father's legacy of creativity and passion. Like his brother, Peter Paul also returned to the East Coast in the later years of his life. Starting around 2009, videos of Peter surfaced online, showing him around the University of Rhode Island campus. These videos, however, revealed a troubling reality. Peter's behavior was erratic, and his speech was often incoherent. It became apparent that Peter was struggling with significant mental health challenges and was in need of professional care. In an effort to document and perhaps better understand his brother's struggles, David created a dreamlike and deeply personal film titled Faith Street Corner Tavern, 2013. The film, which depicted Peter's mental health issues, was shown at several film festivals but never saw a wider release. Through this work, David sought to bring attention to his brother's condition, perhaps as a way to seek empathy and support for Peter. Despite David's efforts, Peter's situation did not improve significantly. Today, Peter, who now resides in Vermont, remains active on YouTube, where he frequently posts and responds to comments. Unfortunately, much of his content remains disjointed and difficult to follow, reflecting his ongoing battles with mental health. The Barbarian brothers were always unconventional, both in their approach to bodybuilding and their lifestyle. Back in 1987, when The Barbarians was released, Peter Paul made a telling comment. Bodybuilders have a very rigid approach to things, and we're outcasts in that world because we've done things our own way, eating junk food, training with heavyweights, and wearing earrings and work boots instead of sneakers. This statement perfectly encapsulated their philosophy of challenging the norms and expectations of the bodybuilding community. They sought to redefine what it meant to be a bodybuilder, breaking away from the strict regimens and polished appearances that were so prevalent at the time. For a brief period in the 1980s, the Barbarian Brothers succeeded in this endeavor. They went viral long before the age of social media, thanks to their extraordinary strength, charismatic personalities, and flamboyant style. Their antics and bold fashion choices were shared and celebrated in magazines, TV shows, and even on the streets, showing the world that there was more than one way to be a famous bodybuilder. They didn't just lift weights, they became larger-than-life characters who could captivate an audience and inspire a generation to think outside the box. Legacy, more than just muscles and movies. Despite the turbulent path they traveled in their later years, the Barbarian Brothers left their mark on bodybuilding, fitness, and pop culture. Their approach to life was bold, unapologetic, and always authentic qualities that resonated with fans and followers long after their peak fame had faded. The Paul twins taught the world that strength isn't just about physical power, it's also about the courage to be yourself, no matter how unconventional that self may be. While their careers in bodybuilding, acting, and music may not have reached the great heights they once dreamed of, the Barbarian Brothers became icons in their own right. They stood out in a world that often favored conformity, using their platform to challenge stereotypes and inspire others to embrace their individuality. They were trendsetters, rebels, and in many ways, pioneers of a new kind of fame that celebrated being different. In their later years, they faced personal battles, David with his search for peace and creativity, and Peter with his mental health struggles. Yet, even in these moments, they remained true to themselves, navigating their unique paths with the same spirit that had once made them stars. Today, the legacy of the Barbarian Brothers lives on through the stories they left behind, the photos that captured their strength, 
and the memories of those who witnessed their unique blend of charisma, strength, and rebellion. They may have been outcasts in the traditional bodybuilding world, but they were never afraid to blaze their own trail, showing everyone that there's more than one way to leave a lasting impact.